All right, what's going on, I'm everybody? Bobby Fadden, man, Eric Sheets Haber. Uh, we're going to be talking through this tiny little three gamer on Tuesday, and uh, not a good night for me last night in DFS. Sometimes when all of that chalk floods together, I try to find creative ways, and you, you risk uh, if you're if you're going to go with you know forty percent guys like Devonte Graham as a as a pivot to try to get weird you know, you're going to lose sometimes. And that's, that's the kind of thing that was happening to me. Like in most of my lineups, I had at least one or two of those. So that was, that was what it is, what it is. I don't really regret it, but uh, obviously don't like the results sheets. How did you do? And let's jump into this slate. Yeah. I might as well, um, might as well uh, share this um, in the, um, I cashed in the big one with it, including a, a terrible dud in, in Shea. I did what I said I was going to do. I, I stacked all this, all this New Orleans stuff and I used Jokic and, and I ran it back with Shea and Shea had zero fantasy points after the first seven minutes of the game. It's kind of hard to make that back, you know? Um, yeah. With that he price. basically ran normal after that, but those first eight minutes, I mean, at 3%, what do you want me to do? You know what I mean? Like yeah. I very happy with that. And, and even Jokic, I mean, he didn't even come in for the fourth quarter, and he could have, um, yeah. but he didn't. But that, but you know, everybody that, that I was fighting with had him also, so wasn't a big deal. But listen, all the all the all the all the New Orleans guys smashed. I did what I said I was going to do, and and by the way, the people that played Maladon, they got he got a little fortunate. They left him in for like all those minutes when the game was over. Um, but we knew that would. I mean, remember we went over that. Yeah. That was exactly what we thought that would happen. Would happen. I think it was. And I was one of them, but you know, just a little, uh, yeah, a little, just a little uh, thing, whatever. I lost the M, like all my MME stuff, and I won, and I cash in the big one, which is, it's, yeah, that happens sometimes. It's nice, well. yeah. Well, no, no, but that was nice in the. I actually, actually, now that I remember it, I looked at your lineup, and it made a lot of sense. I mean, and I liked the low ownership Shea too. Uh, it just it felt like that with everybody. Demar Derozan, I don't think had any fantasy points until like four minutes to go in the second quarter and he ended up with like 48 or something so yeah i saw i saw your i saw yours i i thought that um uh that it was a little bit too too low owned in a bunch of spots like i thought the giddy play was enough you know what i mean like 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 giddy as like i figured that people were gonna play new orleans and run it back with che i was wrong you know what i mean nobody actually did that and yeah. I think that Giddy as a pivot off of that construction was was already enough. I didn't think you needed to go Graham also. Um, well, I like that. I had two different lineups and and oh, I, I, I got them confused. Okay, yeah, okay. I had Graham in one and Giddy in the other one. Oh, I see. Okay, right. Uh, I'm sorry, Graham, 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 sorry, Graham in one and what's his name in the other one? Uh, Alvarado. I still believed in the in the splitting those guys. I really believe that. I mean, we just saw two 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 games in a row, so I don't think that I. I don't think it was as bad as, as maybe it, it looks in the end. And and Graham, by the way, in, in five minutes had 12 fantasy points and that somehow I'll didn't tell you that. I'll tell you the other thing that, that cost me more in Fandle than DraftKings, but uh Mr. Mr. Joval was not very uh yeah. you not and... very support not very supportive of my financial uh, success last night. No, it turns out they don't really they just want to play even if it's even if Nance is not in, they're gonna just uh they're gonna roll with the B unit. But also he's his foul trouble issues in the first quarter, it just always happens like that with he always does weird stuff. And then he comes, then you don't play him and he goes out and gets 50. So weird, weird night. Um, this is a, a smaller slate. So I actually would encourage trying to get creative in, in more than one spot tonight. Cause I think that it's going to take that. I think this is a really, you know, a tough slate because uh, it's only three games. So why don't you talk through a little bit of the, of your Knicks in Detroit and what, what you think about that? Well, one? let's, let's first talk about the slate percent. Cause, cause, cause Luca and Doncic and Luca and Curry, I mean, they project like so far ahead of everybody else. Yeah. And and even one over the other. Like I have Luca with like a 60 point projection and then then Curry with like 50. And then no one else over 40 on the whole slate, you know? Yeah. So so it, it's it's gonna be tough to not play one of those guys. Um at at, at least. You know what I mean? Actually, you probably can't play both, but but you're probably gonna have one of those in most of if not if not all. I would imagine all your lineups. I don't know how you avoid those points. Um that's that's the first first thing, and the other thing is that the uh, you know all that value is coming out of that 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 Clipper game. Um, but but I mean, since you brought it up, I mean, right off the bat, uh, I do like two things from the Knicks game. Um, I'm getting actually a pretty damn good point per dollar projection out of Mitchell Robinson um, for the Knicks. Um, I don't know you know how it's going to stand up, uh, whatever. But I'm seeing him as a really, really strong play on this slate. Um, and the, the other guys, uh, on at least the Knicks side for now, is Jalen Brunson. Uh, again, it's a small slate, so whatever. Uh, Brunson, it makes certainly makes sense. I mean, he's going to be owned, but whatever. And then, um, and then Randall. Um, I think both, all three of those guys look look, look decent. 
I'm not really getting to much of Detroit. I imagine it would be Ivy and or uh, Bogdanovich, but uh, Bojanovic or whatever. But but I'm not I'm not really getting much of them. I, I like the Knicks guys a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, we've got, you know, what, six guys questionable from Detroit who are in the rotation. So it's kind of hard oh, to know how to, yeah. how to analyze their their situation yeah. right now. Everybody plays pretty much off of it outside of I would take a shot on, on Jalen Ivey, on Jaden Ivey. Um, I don't think I can really do much else here. And I think the Mitch Robinson thing is, huh, um, it doesn't feel right to play him at high ownership because they, they, I mean, it's really one game they've given him minutes. And um, he was playing before, even when he was playing earlier in the season, he, he only had one game over 30 minutes the whole season. Um, and then he was hurt and he's coming back. So, and he played, you know, 31 minutes the last time out and that finally had a, his first acceptable fantasy performance in a, you know, a couple, a little over a month. So at a really high ownership, but at the same time, he does look like he projects well. Um, it is a good matchup. We like bigs against Detroit. And from a projection standpoint, while other guys may not look like incredible, like uh, you could use, I, I, I don't mind the idea of using a little bit of, of any of these Knicks. I just don't have like a ton of, none of them stand out as being especially uh, great plays to me. And I, I think we'll have news later today, which will give us a better feel for Detroit. Uh, it is interesting that, that Bagley has just been crushing lately. Um, partly they have had, haven't had all their guys there every game, but he's going to just keep putting up double doubles, even at six K I'll at least consider him. But right now I, I think this is mostly like probably the least interesting game on the slate. Right. <laughs> well, good for him. I didn't even follow up to see what was going on with Bagley. He's been doing better. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's put up 33 or more in three straight and put up 40 in his last one. Um, still not playing like a crazy amount of minutes, but the Knicks, the, the Knicks are so weird, man. They just, I'm sorry. The Knicks and Pistons are so weird. Uh, the Knicks are funny because they 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 play their like they, they have three guys they play like a, a million minutes. The Detroit has nobody that they're willing to like. Just they're sort of doing a little bit of the OKC thing where other, other than Bogdanovich, everybody sort of just feels like their their minutes are totally in flux. Bogdanovich is the only one who's not. Um, so a uh, long shot play would be if, if there is anybody else out or anything like that. It would be Kevin Knox for me. Um, if you get the other guys out again or uh diallo but i I don't think with everybody playing they're going to be very interesting all right uh moving on to golden state at dallas um uh sheets what so you're talking about the the clay the i'm sorry the uh, steph and uh luca thing the weird part is why is the ownership not showing up very high on steph and honestly, it's not like between he and Luca, you've got him at like, I mean, I don't know. I feel like I feel like I would have guessed like 50 percent each kind of a thing. And it's or maybe higher on Luca. I don't know. So so I'm struggling with what to do here because I would like to try to find a way to build different. I sort of agree with you that everybody can kind of just you're they're, they can play these guys. You have the value from the Clippers. Um, you could well, I think the reason I think the reason why that 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 Curry's showing up as lower own is, is because you can't play them both. And and Luca projects ten points higher. You know what I mean? Like so, it's kind of hard mm-hmm. to 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 make the to make a lineup case for 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 Curry. That's I haven't really built yet, so I'm just present. I'm just predicting that that's what's going to end up happening, unless like like more cheap value opens up or something where you could play them both. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that you know that the ten that extra ten points in projection just you know just just doesn't want to make Kirk, doesn't make Curry unplayable. But the other thing is that they're in the same game. So so it's not like one guy can take advantage of a game script. The other guy's not going to take advantage of. You know what I mean? Like if I think Curry's going to get the same minutes as, as, as exposure as, as Luca. So um, I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm just saying that's why I think that the that the Curry uh, Curry ownership is coming in that much lower than than than, than Luca. Mm, gotcha. Yeah. The what do you, what do you this is a an interesting spot what to what to do here like the uh with some of the pieces because like christian wood is like projecting to be the the top play and it is it is a good matchup obviously for him um but he's got the best point per dollar play on the slate from according to saber sim right as of right now um for for me personally on golden state side i i actually like the idea of playing one of thompson who's going to have ownership and then i don't think people are going to play jordan pool so i i don't mind taking jordan pool on this kind of a small slate as a yeah well he's not as an optimal of a play as as clay is um he certainly can get there if he gets hot and i i want to I, I need to play the ownership game somewhere and then it's not the kind of game for draymond but his owner his lack of ownership is, is interesting to me also so 
I would say that I, I would pick between Clay and Poole, and I would pick between Draymond and Steph. And I know that's very different. Um, I think a lot of people are going to play. I think Wiggins even is going to be pretty popular just because the size of the slate. So I'm trying to decide what I want to do here. But right now, Poole and, and Draymond are both on my, you know, get lower ownership plays. And uh, on the Dallas side, I really uh, I really think it's it's mostly Luka. And if you wanted to get a low-owned play that, that maybe maybe you could talk yourself into, maybe Tim Hardaway Jr., um, maybe – Dwight Powell, but it feels so sick. Um, I think, and I, and then I think Looney is another value that I'm just considering. So I'm I'm sort of struggling with this slate early on because it's I don't have any a bunch of guys who I really want to play or ways to get different that I I love. But the best guy I've got right now is Pool Draymond, and I and these are not low owned, but Looney for value. Um, that's pretty much what I have here. What about you? Yeah. So on Dallas, um, I, I have, uh, again, right now, like would like let worse, worse, whatever, uh, let not as good of a play with, with point per dollar as Mitch Robinson. We'll, we'll look at that later, mm-hmm. but I think the Kevin Looney play is interesting because, you know, I, I think that either Robinson or Wood or both are going to get ownership. So if those guys fail and, and then you have like Looney at, at 4,200 at center, I think the, I think that could work for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other one, I mean, I just have, just cause I have them rated the same as I, I have Dinwiddie just about the same as clay, the same price, same everything, whatever. I do have Dinwiddie as being higher owned, but I think they're both going to be just seem like they'll be the same. I mean, I don't know. Um, so, uh, uh, nothing really particularly fancy. It's awesome. It, it, it's probably a preview of something. I don't know exactly what, but it could be a preview of something. And whenever you got Luke and, uh, and uh, Curry on the same court, it makes for a good basket, you know, makes for a good, good TV. Um, yep. And I think you got to play one. I, I just do. I just don't think you're, you're going to get enough fantasy points uh, without one of them. Uh, and I don't think that there's going to be enough value. I mean, I guess you could. I mean, you could play them both, I suppose. There's enough Clipper value where you could do that if you want to. Mm-hmm. And uh, just don't know if that's ever actually worked. You know what I mean? Like to pay 24000 for the – for the two guys and jamming 3,500s. I don't know. We'll, we'll see, but it's not like any of these Clippers are rated to be like that great. We'll talk about them. Right. Right. Uh, right. You could do it. I mean, like for example, I mean, like, we'll, we'll... yeah, I agree. I think it's, I think it's actually doable. And I also think it's viable to try to find a way to build without either of them. <laughs> so I'm just sort of grappling with that myself. I mean, 44, 50, a man, you could certainly make it work, you know? Um, right. Uh for example, okay, so 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 Portland against uh against uh the Clippers. I currently have for whatever it's worth, Justice Winslow is the highest point per dollar play. Um, and I also have him the highest uh well, I don't have him the highest stone, I'm the second highest stone. Uh third highest stone, actually. I, I have Winslow at 40% ownership, super duper early, obviously. Uh, island game, we don't even know start, we don't know anything. Okay. Um, but that's what I have for now. Uh, and then the the I have uh, what's his name? Then I have all these Clippers. So I'm just gonna read them all. They all project the same point per dollar wise, but they have kind of different characters. You know, Reg, I'll just list list them: Reggie Jackson, Batum, Covington, Coffee, Terrence Mann, and Norman Powell. Um, Norman Powell I have is the highest owned of all those guys. Um, but all of those, you know, they range in price from 3,200 up to 5,400, and you know, they they're all. They all, for me, project less than six X, which is a little, which is a little annoying, you know. Um, may, maybe, like you said, you you you, you throw out you you throw out the the Luca and the and 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 Steph and build with with what like Julius Randall types and Jaden Ivy types and don't play any of these thirty five hundreds and four Ks and maybe build that way and just hope that you know hope that the, there's some. What do they call it? Some systematic risk in the Golden State game where maybe there's like water on the floor and nobody scores. I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, the, all this Clipper value, it's, it seems sort of fishy, but it's like the best of what we have. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't think it's I don't think it's very fishy. They, they have nine bodies tonight. Um, I, I think this is like a I think even on a big slate, people I, I don't know why their projections are showing up the way that they are unless there's like they're counting on people who might play for something. Let me just count real quick. How many, yeah, there's nine projections. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Um, nine guys projected to play minutes. What look it's, it's, it looks so chasey, but if Zubach is going to be 0% owned, 
maybe it's worth taking a shot there. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Zubach is not going to be owned coming off of 700 fantasy points. Oh, Zubach, our hero. You mean? Yeah. Zubach, the hero. So yeah. why wouldn't we consider him at least? Um, I think Simons, you play one of Simons or, or, or Nurkic. I'll probably do that in all my lineups. The only problem is kind of ignores the, I, I, there's a part of me that wants to play both Looney and, and, and Mitch Rob together and then be able to spend up elsewhere. But I do like Nurkic a lot for what it's worth. Um, I think he's the 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 more of the high median score uh, between he and Zubac, but I think that Zubac, you know, we just saw a monster ceiling and is going to have no ownership. So I'd be playing one of Simons and Nurkic. I'd be I'd be playing one of Winslow and Hart, and I would then go over to the Clippers side, and I would play. Uh, I, I like Reggie Jackson actually tonight uh, with no with no John Wall. Uh, I think that everybody's like in play, like you said, but I, I'll take a little, I'll take a little, maybe he gets an extra few shots up tonight or maybe handles the ball a little bit more going back to Portland for Batum. We spend a lot of years there. Um, as like you said, I think Norman Powell is probably, uh, probably the, I guess the, the, I don't want to say safe, but the, the safest. So I've got it rated Jackson, uh, Powell, man, coffee, uh, than Zubac, but I'm probably going to play Zubac just because the ownership is so low. But it's it's you know it's hard with these 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 early in the in the day too, because if anybody else goes out for the Clippers, then you're just playing like four Clippers. I think <laughs> like nine bodies is is not a lot. They they have guys who are capable of playing and 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 maybe maybe one we should talk should have talked a little bit more about. Robert Covington is is coming back. They haven't been playing him on the back to backs. They've been giving him little breaks. Um, Thirty two hundred is reasonable enough for me to gamble, especially as I don't think he's, uh, what is he projecting right now? He's actually projecting to have some ownership. So he would be a little bit low, my priorities for the, compared to the other guys. But I think that, uh, I think that it's just because the ownership, where, wherever the ownership gets a little bit lower is where I'm going to end up siding. Cause I don't think these guys are like, I, I don't know which one to say is a lock that my favorite though is, is Reggie Jackson. Um, and then again, like I said, on the other side, Simons and Winslow both look good, but if you don't want to go that route, the get weird play from that side would be Eubanks for me. Um, I think Eubanks is completely viable as a, a long shot play if you don't want to play Nurkic and you don't want to spend that for the other ones. No one's going to play him, and it's thirty four hundred with a guy as a guy who can put up a ceiling. So I wonder, it's going to come down to construction. I wonder how um how important it is this this late this late uh, swap thing. I'm, I'm trying to make a case for just just either setting a rule or like, any, or, or a, um, at least a mental rule, maybe to only play a maximum of like two guys from any of the first two games or four guys or something like that. And just make sure that everybody comes to the later game just to preserve, just to preserve swappage. Um, I don't know. I just, whenever you have like a two, like a, a full, like if only three games played and one of them is like all the way out on, on its own, just feel as though, like unless like the, these, either of these other two games are just stuff you have to have. Um, supposed to just kind of i don't know to just kind of push everything out listen i'll play one of one of one of uh curry or what's his name right mm -hmm. uh maybe maybe i'll play one lineup with curry one lineup we'll play four lineups or four lineup trees right one with curry by himself one with luca by himself one with both of them and one with neither right so you have four little four little trees okay i think mm -hmm. it's a cool way to think about tonight's late because that's really what it comes down to is how what how you do with what you deal with those studs and then try to then kind of like wait stuff out to the end. Maybe take one shot at like Mitch Rob or or who do you like on the Detroit side? Ivy. Um. Uh. Yeah, he would be my favorite one, but I, I it's really hard because they have so many questionables. I don't I don't know how to how to figure it out quite yet. You know, well, but the good thing is we'll have that. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. You we know, will. we can go back to the guy you kind of like, kind of like put out there. Uh, uh, the other day, listen, it's not at New York, but it is against this former team. And maybe Kevin Knox, like you were when you mentioning before, you know, he didn't quite, he didn't, he didn't follow through with the minutes this, the, in his last game, mm -hmm. but the games before that, he was 20, like you were saying, 29, 26, 25, 23 on a, on a tiny little slate where no one's going to play this. I, I think no one's going to play this first game exactly for this reason. Right. Yeah. Maybe you take your shot at, at, at Kevin Knox or something like that. Um, and, and you get ahead of all these other 3,700s. I don't know. Yeah. Or play him in addition. And then you can play Luca and, 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 and yeah. step together if you want to, I think that's totally viable. Um, 
Yeah. So I'll try to get my stuff out. I'll, 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 I'll do my best to be back for live. Um, I've got a bunch of things I'm running out to do today. It is my birthday. So hopefully we can have some good luck. Happy birthday, Bobby. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, and I'm, I'll, I'll try to make, and I'll try to get my, my post uh, st- stuff up later. I've, I've gotten looking for houses today. So I'm also trying to, trying to figure oh. it was a good day with three game with three games going. Well, what you have to do, you got to post your cores because the, the Bobby birthday mar- narrative is very, uh, is very well, strong. I'll get it in. I'll probably get it in a little bit late though. Um, just because that's, that's just the, the way it is. But also I think it's probably better because that way we will have some Detroit information and it won't be a bunch of guys who end up out. <laughs> right. Um, all right, buddy. We'll have a good one. Good luck to everybody tonight. This is just a quick preview, but we will, uh, I'll be with, I'll try to be with you guys live at six Eastern. Um, I'm going to, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to do that. So that's my plan right now. Uh, all right. everybody. All right. Good luck.